It's the 6th of August and I'm Tom Glass and welcome to The Roast. Tonight, the government changes its mind on the Racial Discrimination Act because of overwhelming public opinion against it. So if this trend extends to the polls, expect to see Tony Abbott step down in favour of other any day now. I mean, let's face it, Other does have more policy ideas than Bill Shorten. Tonight, 18C to stay the same and counter-terrorism laws to get tougher. I also heard that Tony Abbott wants everyone to unite against terrorism and join Team Australia, which is great. I bags Ben. Captain, the... I'm captain. Uh, OK, can I be the vice captain? Oh. I bags vice captain. Oh, um, what if I just... I'm English, can I take Tom's place? Sounds great. No, no Tom! Tom. Ricky Muir, federal senator and frightened child, has fired his second staffer in a week. But don't worry, if there's one thing we've learned about Ricky, it's that he's perfectly capable of looking after himself. Do you understand what balance of power means? First, Ricky fired Glenn Drury, a highly successful political strategist, and now Peter Breen, a former solicitor and New South Wales MP. But he's hanging on to Keith Littler, a man whose political experience is so invaluable, Ricky just had to keep him on board. Mr Littler is a truck driver who produces motorsport programs known as the Grunt Files. The Grunt Files, of course, is the quarterly essay of motorsport programs. <laughs> The most recent firing, Peter Breen, says he was let go in part because he took a sick day following surgery at a skin cancer clinic. Oh, Ricky, you're so fine, you're so fine, you fired a cancer victim. Explain yourself, Ricky. Mr Breen advised he was too ill to work on Friday. He subsequently used Friday to travel to and attend a festival more than 700 kilometres from Sydney. Though if Ricky thinks Breen's festival antics are bad, wait until he finds out about the guy in his office who taught his eight-year-old daughter how to do burnouts and threw kangaroos shit at his brother. But luckily, even after all these axings, Ricky won't be by himself in Canberra. The Australian motoring enthusiast senator is now left with one junior advisor on his Canberra staff. Oh, I'm sure they'll make a great team. Hello, Ricky Muir's office. Certainly, I'll put you through to the senator now. But after losing two staff members, Ricky's looking to the future. I now hope to rebuild my team. It's understood for Chief of Staff, he's hoping to get the Stig. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch, the media mogul who has almost finished transitioning into a tortoise, says his company 21st Century Fox has withdrawn its bid to acquire media group Time Warner. Mr Murdoch's initial cash and stock bid earlier this year was worth about 80 billion US dollars, or one Foxtel subscription. The failed bid means Murdoch's media influence will remain as too much instead of his intended way too much. Board game Scrabble, aka Words with Grandma, has added 5,000 words to its dictionary. Still not a real word, Scrabble. As for the game Snap, its dictionary still contains just the one word. Among the words you can now use are buzzkill, sudoku and frenemy. Excuse me for a moment. Hello Peter, I told you frenemy was a word. Now put me through to Ricky. A dead koala has been dumped outside a Victorian police station with a $50 note in its mouth. A $50 note is of course the weirdest thing to be found in a koala since chlamydia. The koala is the first Australian marsupial to be found with money since Kangaroo Jack. He stole the money and he's not giving it back. Don't watch it, just trust me, it's part of the plot. A dead koala with money in its mouth is still less sinister than a plastic dog which you put money in through a hole in its skull. For the roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Sorry, I'm just going to be one more second. I'm on hold to Ricky Muir's people. I hear there are a couple of openings in his electoral office. Hello? <coughs> Hello? Ah, oh, forget it. First up tonight, the government has sacrificed its plan to water down the Racial Discrimination Act, all in the name of fighting terrorism. Now, if you're having trouble connecting those two things, you're not alone. So is the Prime Minister. So to properly understand the PM's reasoning, let's bring up the press conference footage and run it through my trusty filter here. OK? Roll it up. The government's uh, perfectly reasonable under different circumstances attempt uh, to amend Section 18C uh, has become a, com a complication that we just don't need and we're not going to proceed with. We haven't really changed our opinions, we just really want to be elected again. Uh, I don't want to do anything that puts our national unity at risk uh, at this time. I am just using terrorism as an excuse to recapture the ethnic vote. 
I want the communities of our country to be our friend, uh, not our critic. Uh, I want to work with uh, the communities of our country uh, as Team Australia here. See alternate clip. It, uh. We are one, but we are many. I'm scared. You're a terrorist. We are Team Australia. OK, so the proposed changes to 18C are gone in favour of bolstered counter-terrorism initiatives. Bad news for any bigoted terrorists out there, especially since they had to find out via an impersonal news conference. Not everyone, though, because some of the one person affected by this backdown were told personally. Mr Abbott confirmed on ABC Radio that he had personally informed Andrew Bolt about the backdown. A personal call from the Prime Minister. Woo! As they say, though, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to the Dalt Report. I'm Andrew Dalt, and this is the Dalt Report. Coming up, I interview a glacier about climate change. I'll ask it why it keeps pretending to melt. But first, I look at how the ABC is wasting taxpayers' money on parodies of conservative commentators. Oh, my phone is ringing. OMG, it is my best friend, Tony. Uh, hello, Tony. Uh, 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 Tony, I'll just put you on speakerphone. Uh, 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 What's that? You're not going to repeal 18C now, but you said that was my law. I defended you against Malcolm Turnbull. Uh, 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 oh, I see. So you're holding off on 18C because you need to fight terrorist Muslims? That sounds a little racist, Tony. You might get in trouble under 18C. <laughs> but thank you. At least you told me first. It's nice to know the Prime Minister still values certain members of the community above others. Well, it looks like maybe Australians just aren't ready for freedom of speech. What next? Will I have to start wearing a burqa now? <laughs> Welcome to the new Australia, or should I say, death to the infidels. <laughs> what did you say when the Prime Minister called you personally to tell you that he's dropped an election promise inspired by something you wrote? I'd love to hear about it at the Dalt TV or hashtag Dalt TV. What? So Tony Abbott called Bolt personally? He didn't even send me a text message. You know why, he's probably still mad at me for not awarding any of his daughters a scholarship to the Roast Comedy School. <laughs> yeah, you tell him, Tom. <laughs> hey, it's the Roast House Band ABCDC. Actually, Tom, that's not what we're called anymore. We're now Operation Sovereign Baseline. Show him, Fred. <laughs> so what do you guys think of this whole discrimination thing? A smooth melody is colourblind, Tom. I play both the white keys and the black keys. Yeah, and Operation Sovereign Baseline doesn't discriminate. We play all the songs, the roast music bed, the headlines music and the social media theme. Yeah, awesome. Can you play the opening title song? No, that's not one of ours. Ah, oh, so you only have three songs. It's still two more than the Boomtown Rats. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Clark. All right, Operation Sovereign Baseline, let's stop the boats and start the beats. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So it looks 14, like 15, Tony Abbott's 15. proposed changes to terrorism laws are aimed at targeting homegrown terrorism. Although if you really support Team Australia, you'd know that homegrown terrorism is far better than terrorism growing overseas. Because just like that guy from your high school who did his gap year in Kenya and came back with dreads, the government is concerned that any Australians fighting overseas will utilise their newly learned skills to commit terrorism here at home. Although it could be argued that white people with dreadlocks is itself a form of terrorism. <laughs> you like that one, guys? No, I just dropped my drumstick. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's ten, all the time we 12, have tonight. 13, 14, but with 15, the terror 15, threat 15, high 15, in Australia, 19, 19, apparently, 19, 19, always remember four, if you see five, something, six, six, run! Six, run for your lives! Good night! white boy what what's wrong what did i say <laughs>